Hey guys, it's Chris South here with another episode of the Easy EMT, your guide to learning how to be the best paramedic EMT or healthcare provider you can be. Today's episode is a good one. It's all about altered mental status. So with altered mental status, it's not just a chief complaint, but it's actually an indication that should direct us to start searching for what's going on. So if we were taking an ACLS or a PALS course, we'd start hunting for those old H's and T's. But what I want you to start doing as part of your assessment is to start doing kind of an H's and T's, but something a little bit different, um, which I call D-HITS, D-H-I-T-S. We're going to talk more about that in just a second. But when a patient is altered, whether um, whatever's going on, we need to make sure why they are altered. Because think about it. Your brain is basically two brains. you got the big brain in the front, which gives you all the thoughts and weird stuff like what I'm coming up with right now. And you got the tiny brain in the back, the primitive brain, which is a brain stem. Now, just like at home, there are resources that I have that gets that home going. Now, if my resources get limited, the first thing I'm cutting out is the cable television and the internet. That's all entertainment. Your brain is the same way. So once it's not getting the resources that it needs, all of those things that are important, like uh, thoughts, uh, the things that make us creative and stuff start to go away and the brain starts taking those resources and putting it toward the brain stem. So let's start thinking about a little bit when we're doing our assessment. Number one, anybody that has altered mental status, we need to do a good history, a good assessment, which does include getting our glucometer out and making sure that we have a good finger stick blood glucose level. We want to check for hypoxia. We want to check and make sure they're not hypotensive or anything. So here are some common reasons why people have altered mental status. And again, I want you guys to also understand too that when people have suicidal thoughts and ideation, they need to be ruled out for altered mental status before we go in that direction because some folks can have some of those thoughts and things and it may be not because they're, they're having a mental issue, it may be because they're having an issue that's because of some altered mental status stuff. So let's look at D hits and I'm going to put it all out in the comments for you too. So D stands for disease processes and these can be like Alzheimer's and dementia. The H is all of those hypo and hyper things like hypoglycemia, hyperglycemia, hypo and hyperkalemia, hypocalcemia, hypo and hyperthermia, and all of those fun things. It also includes hypoxia. The I stands for infection, especially in old folks. We can see a lot of infection problems. All right. So I hit. So the next thing is T. And you know, we're going to be looking for toxins um, to see if anything's going on. Are they intoxicated? Uh, what's happening? Uh, thrombosis is another one, okay, because they can be hypoxic because of the thrombosis. And S, which is a big one, which is going to stand for sepsis, shock, seizures, all right? So take a look at all of those things and rule all of those things out and see, hey, maybe that patient's altered because of something that I can correct in the field. This is a real quick one, guys. So I'm living here in North Dakota now, and it's so nice to be here. Next week is going to be a big, huge long and one of my favorite things which is cardiovascular stuff and every other day I want to post a video and we're going to learn EKGs all the way from exactly how the heart works all the way up into interpreting 12 leads so students who are doing cardiology this one's for you thanks guys and be safe out there